Are you having a hard time getting your side chain to sound right? Well, this video is for you. So maybe you have no side chain at all and your drums are sitting behind your mix. And you'd like them to sound like this. Or maybe you are side chaining, but you haven't really discovered this EQ. Even set to such a quick release time, your actual release will feel very long, like this. And you have to adjust your ratio and your attack and release, and you're getting some weak ass side chaining that doesn't work anymore. But we're gonna learn how to use our EQ right now. And we're gonna be able to take it from this to this. Let's get into it. Before I even get into this, some of you guys might have noticed that I'm using a compressor that doesn't look like yours if you're in Ableton 9 or Ableton Live 10. Here's a little pro tip. The Ableton Live 8 compressor is actually a faster, better option than your Ableton Live 10 or 9 compressor. It's going to remove all the clicks and pops that you might be experiencing, and you can set it more aggressively. I'm going to have a link in the description where you guys can go ahead and download this. It's not necessarily a better compressor, it's a faster compressor and more appropriate it for side chaining. All right, so what do we got going on here real fast? All right, I've got a drum group with a kick, snare, and a hi-hat rack. I got a guitar loop, an ambient, and a sub. I'm using a lot of samples from the Aubit sound pack, Awake. I'm actually gonna be doing a review on this pack real soon, and I'd figure I'd use some of the samples today. So I do have everything routing into one side chain channel here. It's just a blank audio track that I have a couple of side chains on. Make sure when you're routing, you have it set to in. Okay, but right now I'm not going to use that. I wanna show you guys something and I wanna explain this, okay? So what I'm gonna do actually is unsend this. So the ambience is out and I'm just going to go ahead and solo my kick and I'm going to solo my ambience, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and take the side chain from here, well, the side chain compressor anyway, and put it on my ambient track. So we could, basically we're just going to hear our kick and our ambient. So we're gonna see the relationship of what's happening here. So let's listen to that real fast. Now, if I turn up my release, you're gonna be able to hear how the kickback on the ambience happens. And this is what side chaining is, in case anybody didn't know. So we're using one instrument to push down on the volume, in this case, of the other instrument. So this helps things get out of the way of other things. For example, we want our kick and snare to really kick through in a mix. So we often side chain them to everything. But again, I'm gonna show you on the atmosphere here or the ambience so we fully understand what's happening. All right, let's go ahead and turn our release time back to the 23 milliseconds it was. I'll talk about that in a second. Before I get into the EQ section, let's understand how I'm setting this compressor. I've got my ratio all the way up because I like to set things aggressively. I wanna bring it down to the floor. The higher the ratio, the more compression we're gonna get. I have a very quick attack because I want this to happen very quickly. I want the side chain to kick in right away. I have a release time set to 23 milliseconds. Okay, I use the Nick Fever Delay calculator calculator and based on the BPM, I got 23 milliseconds for a 64th note. If you guys have seen other videos of mine, you know I use the Nick Fever delay calculator to set really anything in milliseconds. So I've got a hard knee, that means it's going to kick in right away. I've got a look ahead set to 10 milliseconds, giving the compressor 10 milliseconds to get ready for the sound, so it's an immediate side chain. I got it set to FF1 mode, and that is the fastest mode like I was talking about. And I've got it triggered to the kick. And basically I'm turning up the gain here just so it gets more more signal. It doesn't actually turn up the volume in anything. It just gives more signal to the side chain. Now, I want you to notice that the gain reduction meter is basically a visual cue of what's happening. So when you see the gain reduction pushing down, however much it's pushing down is how much side chain's happening. And when you see it, the side chain is happening. So it's really good to match up your eyes to your ears by using this gain reduction. In fact, I set most of my side chains mostly by eyes and then use my ears. So now now that we understand what's going on, let's check this out. But what's really weird is if I don't have the EQ turned on, then this 23 milliseconds becomes very arbitrary.
Notice even when I brought the release all the way down to the floor, it should be coming back immediately. It was not. It was coming back at some longer random time. And this is why a lot of us get frustrated using this compressor. And then we resort to things like ghost triggering or LFO tool. And we have to route our MIDI or shaper box where we have to route our MIDI or draw in our MIDI. And all of this is just taking time away from the creative process. All we have to do is understand this one concept. All you guys will be side chaining like pros in no time at all. And this is the heart of the lesson. Let's get into it. But before we jump into it, let me encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button and the little bell. It'll keep you notified every time I have a new video. As an Ableton certified trainer and instructor at Icon Collective, Warp Academy, and Evident, I talk about everything from sound design to cool plugins you need to know about to tips and tricks on Ableton. I also do some finger drumming here and some cool original music. So stay connected. So let's ask ourselves what we're asking of this compressor. We're saying, yo, compressor, when you hear the sound from the kick, I want you to do all these settings that I set. So basically push down on the ambience or whatever is being sidechained. Basically push down on the ambience by this amount when you hear the kick. Now, if you think about it, we have to understand what the kick is. Like, what are we asking of this compressor, right? Because the kick actually has two parts to every kick sound has two parts to it. It's got this high attack and then it's got the oom, right? So if you think about what a kick is, like an actual kick drum, a kick drum would usually be mic'd on both sides. One mic would be right here by the beater, and this is the smack or the transient of the kick. Okay, not a lot of low end here, all right? And then on the other side, people will put a microphone usually by the hole. So now all the air, after the beater hits the head, all the air in the drum gets pushed out through the hole. And this is the oom. So every kick is actually both of these sounds. In fact, let's go take a look at our kick sample right now and see if we can visually see this. Do you see how it goes? Kick oom, kick oom. Look one more time. There it is. Awesome, right? So the side chain doesn't know what to listen to, so it listens to the whole kick. That's what we've asked it to do. But we really don't want it to stay open for all of that air coming out of it. And that's just the tail of the kick. That doesn't have anything to do with the transient. All I want to do is preserve the transient of my kick. So I have to tell the sidechain compressor to not look at the low information. And that's exactly what this EQ is doing. I'm not removing sound from the song. I'm not removing sound from the kick. I'm basically saying, hey, compressor, listen to the kick, but only listen to the frequencies above what I've set. So that's the control that we have here. When we turn on the EQ, we've got these filter types. So I've got low cut and I've rolled off everything up to 15K. That's the way I've set it. Now, you might be asking yourself, oh, 15K is a bit high, like what's even up? Up there. Well, I don't exactly know how the algorithm of this works. I just know through experience that for a kick, that if I turn my frequency all the way up and my cue all the way down, I get the most immediate side chain with only the transients getting through. And this is what I want. So let's dial this in together. I like to start up super high and then I pull back on the frequency to maximize how much the transient's coming through. I know when I've gone too far because I do want it to go further to the ground. So I want the gain reduction to get further to the bottom. I want the gain reduction to be all the way to the ground and then come back immediately so I can set the release the way I want. So I'm gonna turn back this frequency knob until I notice starting to stick at the bottom. Watch what happens as I turn it back. You could tell that it's already gone lower to the ground. Let me show you one more time. Just from all the way up here to here, you could tell that right here, it's actually going down further. And that's what we're looking for. So right there, it stops here. Now I've got it all the way to the ground. Now, if I go much further than this, you're gonna notice it just started to stick. So now we're getting some delay actually. It's sticking there. And the further I go down, the more it'll stick. And that's not what I want because I want to set the release to what I want. So we saw around 1K was really perfect. 
It's basically hitting the ground and coming right back. Now I could use my delay calculator to set exactly what I want and boom, I've got the perfect sidechain. So now, real quick, just to make this 100% clear, let's jump back over to everything going to one side chain. Now, the reason I do that, I'm gonna turn this off. The reason I do that is because I want everything to be going through one open and close. So sending everything here allows me to get every one of my instruments through the same open and close. Now it can be argued that some people want less on their sub or more on their sub or more on certain things. And that's fine. I mean, do what you have to do, right? But try to use the least amount of side chains as possible or that's my opinion on it anyway. Bring this back to around 1K. I thought that was the one. I could actually back off my gain now as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Now to set the snare, it's almost the same exact thing, but you just gotta think of where the buildup is on the snare, or any instrument for that matter. So the buildup on the kick obviously was down at the bottom with all that air being pushed out. Well, the buildup of the snare would probably be at the top in most snares because that's where the ka is. So I wanna roll off a lot of that. And then I use my frequency to set this the way that I want. It's all about knowing how to get what you want out of this compressor. It's a little bit of a skill to learn, but not really, right? If you're using your eyes and then you're using the Nick Fever Delay Calculator, it really kind of does everything for you. But I can understand that if you didn't know this, it would be a little confusing. So I hope this really cleared up everything about side chaining and how to use the Ableton Live compressor as a side chain like a pro. Because we're basically getting volume shaping here. We're bringing it all the way to the ground and and it's coming back immediately. There's a lot of different ways to control your volume and control your instrument shaping. There's volume shaping, there's LFO tool, and there's side chaining. I'm not saying any one is better than any other one, but for me personally, this is the fastest, easiest way once you fully understand it. Again, I'm not saying that this way is better than the way that you might be doing it. Just think of it as another option and I'll let you decide which one works better. If you guys found this helpful or useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm gonna do a lot of these 101 quick ones here with no video of my face or anything because it just saves a little bit of time and I could put out more. So don't worry, I'm still gonna put out the ones with the video, but I wanna do these in addition. Don't forget to leave a comment, guys. Tell me how you guys are side chaining and tell me if this is working for you. Remember, we're all in this together and my main focus is to help you guys, all right? Catch you next time.